Welcome, and thank you for joining our case series presentation today. Uh, I'm Dr. Andrew Peterson, along with my partner, Dr. Paul Fuentes. We're here in Arcadia Perio, and just wanted to continue on with our case series presentation. So today's discussion will be about soft tissue grafting. Here is a case that presents with localized gingival recession on the facial of number 24. When these cases come in, there's a few things that we commonly look for as periodontists. First thing that we're gonna check is tooth vitality. So endodontic testing to make sure that the tooth responds normally to cold. Uh, the big thing that we look at in terms of whether or not we're gonna soft tissue graft is tooth mobility. That's gonna be a key prognostic factor in terms of long-term uh, long good prognosis. Um, another thing that we look at when deciding to graft these cases and what kind of root coverage we can get is we're gonna look at the, where the interproximal horizontal bone levels are at. In this case, there's some slight horizontal bone loss. You can tell that based on the open papillae, even though there's calculus present, but um, when using the Miller classification system, uh, this would be a Miller type three defect. The key thing to take note of is that 100% root coverage is not likely indicated. Etiology of recession. As with most periodontal disease processes, the primary etiological factor is gonna be bacterial plaque. Uh, some predisposing factors to consider when uh, deciding to do gingival recession grafting is gonna be uh, a thin gingival phenotype uh, in this case, the gingival phenotype is, is thin on the apical portion in the attached mucosa. Um, tooth position, the buccal inclination. Um, occlusion, you can see in protrusion from this photo, the tooth hits, tooth number 24 hits prior to any of the other teeth. And tooth brushing habits. Another factor to consider too is going to be a shallow vestibule and or an aberrant frenum attachment. So when it comes to treatment planning, different options to consider based on patient goals, patient health history, and a variety of other factors. So these are five different options that I decided to choose from for this patient. Keep in mind the health history on this patient is she is osteoporotic and has been on oral bisphosphonates for 10 plus years. So that's gonna play a, a key factor in my treatment planning process. One of the first options, kind of our gold standard for root coverage procedures is gonna be connective tissue grafting. Another alternative to that is gonna be um, alloderm or an acellular dermal matrix. A third option would be free gingival grafting uh, with the intention of doing gingival augmentation with possible root coverage. Um, a lateral pedicle flap, which is kind of an older procedure, first described in the 1950s. Um, by Dr. Group out of the, what was then, I think, Oregon University Dental School. Um, and then also a double pedicle flap. All these are different options to consider based on the patient's health history and the clinical, clinical presentation. Uh, you'll see on the next following slides what I decided to do for this patient. So root preparation key in any sort of soft tissue augmentation and or root coverage procedures. Uh, thorough clinical debridement um, with hand and or uh, ultrasonic instrumentation. Root recontouring with uh, rotary instrumentation. We want to flatten those root surfaces to create a broad um, avascular surface. Uh, the next thing that we usually do is we treat the roots with some sort of chemical. In this case, EDTA, a key leading agent which will allow for connective, um, connective tissue attachment. So flap design, we elected to go with a sliding flap or a lateral pedicle flap. Uh, flap design is harvested over site 23. Due to the thick gingival biotype, we're able to reposition that tissue over the root surface of number 24. Uh, the key to this is having enough width. We want to 
be able to cover the root surface, but we want to be able to maintain adequate blood supply on the mesial and the distal. This is done by creating a split thickness bed preparation, followed by a full thickness dissection, and then split thickness again to allow for flap mobility. Split thickness meaning a periosteal releasing incision that'll give the flap adequate mobility. Connective tissue harvesting. So in this case, we're doing the procedure twofold. We're still harvesting some connective tissue, which will be laid down first prior to coronally repositioning our tissue. Uh, the, this tissue is harvested from the tuberosity. Uh, it, for grafting one to two sites, tuberosity tissue is more fibrous, so it holds up better. It gives us that thick, bound down, dense tissue, while decreasing post-operative discomfort when we harvest from the tuberosity. So that's a good place to harvest when we're dealing with limited um, sites for soft tissue grafting. So the connective tissue, the connective tissue is harvested and positioned and sutured into place so that there is no mobility of the connective tissue graft. After the connective tissue is sutured into place with some sling sutures and some independent interrupted sutures, the tissue is then coronally repositioned and it's, it's repositioned beyond the CEJ. So we wanted to overcorrect for the mucogingival deformity. And you can see in this case, the connective tissue that I harvested was large enough to cover site number 23 as well to reduce post-operative discomfort during healing. Uh, in this case, a horizontal mattress stabilizing suture, a sling suture, and a couple independent interrupted sutures to help maintain, um, maintain the flap and make sure that it was coronally repositioned. So here we are, one month out. The site is healing very well um, based on the patient's health history and uh, a little bit slower or poor wound healing. Um, I'm, I'm happy with this result at one month. Um, you can take appreciation for the thickness that we've gained and also to almost 100% root coverage. So here we are before and after soft tissue grafting with a lateral pedicle flap with connective tissue grafting. Um, thank you for joining in with me today and feel free to comment or leave any questions. Have a good day.